We are in Princeton. Yes, that's right. We are headed to the Collector's Carnival, the last show of the year. Princeton was one of the stops along the Wabash Cannonball. I heard this was a sellout this time, which is great. This is the last show of the season. The weather is good enough for the outdoor sellers, and I am going to them first. You know, it's early. I paid $15 to come in. I can shop later, but I've got to get back to my sale. I'm mainly here to promote the sale in Earlington at my storehouse this weekend. I'm hoping these dealers who are setting up today and selling tomorrow will have money to spend on Sunday when I want to really get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. Well, for working a lot of 14 hour days, I don't look too scruffy, I guess. This is where I remember we found people who were just taking things out of the truck and selling them for whatever. And I see a bunch of people already descending on them. So we're gonna take a look too. They have the same idea I did about displaying in boxes. Still nice enough for some people to be camping out here. That's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, go ahead and do your thing. As you can no, see, no. My usual this is cluster. great. No, I like it. And I like that you're doing uh, Christmas colors, but you're mixing in glass and things. This is a really nice piece of Fenton. I did a lot of uh, vintage Christmas here last year and did fantastic. I'm not really surprised. So it's worth coming down because you're only, what, an hour from yeah, here? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Very cool. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, I don't have a ton, but I'm saving mine from Outdoora, so that's where mine are going to come out mm -hmm. about it later. So I figured once I saw that, I thought it was actually fun to let people just sort yeah, of guess. Kind of Lisa, your booth is so cool. Thank you. It's not done yet. It's coming along. It's great. It's going to look good. And all that stuff back there. Yep. That can be plugged in. Lots of fun. Tree, the angel. I like that both of your ceramic trees are multicolored. It's not just one. Yeah. Yeah. This one has butterflies on it. Yeah, that's different too. Some of them were broken, but I found them on the interwebs. <laughs> you can sometimes replace if you find the right thing or it's a simple one. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, I mean, you guys have cool stuff, so of course. Black Westmoreland Turtle, that's really cool with the lid there. Little cigarette box. I think I'll have that because it's a good glaze. Things are starting to appear, including a big Metlock's orange carafe from the 50s and 60s. Bells seem to be taking off lately. This is a Spanish lace in the Fenton silver crest. And I always like these little jadeite pieces. We'll ask about that. Compared to these, which are new, the tops are obviously new too. It's not really the same color tone, really. Just a little different shade. Sneezy, if that's a chip, darn. Well, those people were really nice. Their names are Paul and Liz Davis, and I just met them for the first time. A bunch of great people, actually. It's a nice little group in there. Each hall has its own personality. It looks like he's got some merch. Ooh, yeah, now this one might be the killer new Christmas booth. Yikes. Yeah, this is what I mean about a lot of new stuff. I see a few early buyers, but for a lot of these people, this is the end of the season, so they may not be as hungry. Whereas I'm about to sell everything in my storehouse, I hope, and have room to take on new things. Two for 25 is not bad on these. They're the old plow wheels. And they could be painted and done as really cool post-industrial modern decor as wall plaques. I tried it myself in Seattle. I was surprised how good it looked. Snowshoes, $70, that's not bad. They're a little newer though. You can tell by the way this is done. Made in Canada. These next save U.S. military. They did 1985. It's like Rambo 3 or something, right? 160 on the single dispenser. I haven't been able to buy any of those because people are charging retail right now because they're selling well. Is this your last one of the year? No, I might have one more show due. It's an outside show depending on the weather. November 12th, weather permitting. Where's that? Uh, Bloomington, Illinois. Bloomington. Oh, Bloomington's got one more show. Okay. Ah, yes. People working hard. This fellow is certainly working hard, too. 60 bucks for the big rocket plane sled, which is actually the good one of the three. They're all neat, though. They're all good old wooden sleds, but the rocket plane was a little larger. Anything made for adults is scarcer. Let's see if anything else has come out here yet. The 60s, 70s era blue glasses are nice. They're for Noritake. $8 per stem. Late 70s design. 
very intelligent the way that they're done there. You've got this teardrop and it's very easy to hold. So even if the glass sweats, you're not going to drop it. All stems are a desirable feature in glassware. Blue is a good early 80s color. Westmoreland piece, $9 with a Charlton decoration. That's a pretty one. And this one is also Westmoreland Charlton decoration. The wedding stands typically do well when they have this decoration. They're pretty consistent sellers and always have that. You know how that goes. 1975, this one's actually signed by the artist, which is not something we see so much. And look, $12, that is going with me. We'll look for chips around the edges because there's lots of saw teeth. All right, we're going to take that Westmoreland piece. And I like this Pyrex, but I think I found my buy here in this space. Depending what you sell, you might set up really fast. Or you might take a while like me. The farm table I have at the storehouse sale looks a lot like that for condition. Find something it'd be $25 though. I really do like the kettles from this part of the country with the interesting information on them. This is from Louisville, big iron making place at the time. Doesn't tell us the price though. Donald's nephews, this is all cold painted. This is original and it's in great shape. I mean, you see a little wear, but considering that all of that is done over the glaze and just little hands rubbing, it would be enough to rub it off. It's actually remarkably clean. Of course, they don't tell us the maker, just Walt Disney Productions, probably Monmouth or one of the ones in this part of the country. And they deliberately did not tell them the maker because they wanted to be all about Disney. Cute little cowboy and cowgirl outfits from the 50s and 60s here. Santa Fe Railroad, AT and SF. $50, that seems like a fair price for an old oiler. This would have been a plain utilitarian thing, but it was to lubricate large parts of the engine. Some of our flags are in great condition. Cut off $50 for the pair. Okay, on to the last of the center pavilions here. Then there's some way on the other side. There, you're actually allowed to drive around today. Tomorrow they won't let you, but there's not so many pre-buyers here. Well, I got the Fenton piece for $12. Oh, this is great. Nice little piece of Roxane. Well, thank you, Colleen. I appreciate you uh, setting me up, and I like what I got. A sausage grinder, and one of my favorite things, honestly, and this is a Brown's Mule, which was a pretty popular plug tobacco back then. R.J. Reynolds, as you see there. This is from about 1910, after the con tobacco consortiums were broken up and reconstituted. But this is a cigar cutter from a cigar store or general store at the time. Murano looking but thin at the edges. This is Japanese from the 60s. I always just loved looking into that pattern. These folks appear to have vintage fashion. The other clothes I was looking at seem to be new. So I'm going to steer away from them. But where there's vintage fashion, you might see other vintage things. And here's a cool boudoir lamp that I haven't really seen before. Dutch mill with geese. A little bit of a chip there, unfortunately. Hello. 1930s. I have to admit, I kind of like this. Tailored knit, but it's very synthetic, and I can't really do synthetics. It's never been worn, though. It has the original $13 price tag, and they only want $5, but it's small. They got it for $2 at a house sale, so they're being very fair about the price, honestly. But we do... Autogies markets, witchy stuff. Oh yeah, right. And then vintage clothes sort of yeah. is a mainstay too, it looks like. Well, actually, this is, these are just things I've acquired along the way. Oh. <laughs> I normally do more plants and I'm more- Oh, cool. I, those two things that are hanging out there in the corner are more what I like. Yeah, I like that actually. That's really That's great. My, my thing, but um, I have all this excess stuff. Made a good spot to just be able to like- I can bring anything, exactly. Yeah, this is really cute. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen a stick and ball piece of this era before. And um, how much is the chartreuse uh, dish here? Mm, ten. Ten? Okay. I'll take it. 
Well, that was really fun. Those young ladies are just selling a lot of their collections and stuff. That was a piece of Blanco I bought from them. But we had a very interesting exchange about how she really wants to learn about this stuff and she loves old stuff and I'm excited for her. So maybe we'll have a new uh, member of our community. A lot of new in the metal department here. In the far field, I see windows and farm stuff and furniture and what looks like a kind of nice patio set or two, but I don't need any of that right now. 65 for the pair on the Impoli bottles, 55 on the 1930s beverage set with all the glasses seems about fair. $5 on these. Those are pretty nice too for that price. Two little purple snifters. Purple's always a good color in glass because it was hard to make and it didn't usually get made for too very long. The enamel's a little chip, but I like that this phone has color that looks like it's original, even if it's only a beige color. $20 isn't a bad price. It's the classic Western Electric. Crates, I'm telling you, it's the new way. Real railroad lanterns. Fake cast iron. Looks like real hall. Little red riding hood. Also real. This mainly looks authentic down here. And it stirs a lot of feelings in a lot of people. But there is a collector market for it. This set seems to be a complete and in really good condition. 110. On the other hand, all these beautiful porcelain bowls, there's not much of a market anymore. $15. The shape is similar to RS Prussia with a lot of design. May have been someone else, but they're all very pretty. Lots of hand painting, you know, $12 RS Germany, the Schlegel Milk Factories made beautiful things. This is a transfer with white painted embellishment. That was another way they decorated. There's the artist's signature for the original design. They've done the same thing here with the yellow roses. With the T-Con signature, this is Royal Rudel shot. These were all fine companies in Germany, Prussia, Austria. There's just not the demand right now. And they're so beautiful. RS Prussia, this used to be worth $265. Now this one has a crack, but look how cheap. I like the stick-handled PS de Dimitas. That's a great design by Frederick Reed, one of the early pieces. Well, we know these glow. I feel like I have so many of these. I'd have to get a good deal for the pair. This one is hand-painted by Bennett. This one by Francis Buxton. Oh, motion lamps. I love motion lamps. This is a good thing for me because they're that fun, kitschy, mid-century modern, but they want $125 for Niagara Falls, and that is full price. Spice sets are pretty reasonable at $15 to $20 each. They have a lot of cute stuff. Nice enameled bread box, that's real, $85. A cool panther ashtray here, $35, but I can see why. It looks like maybe Lane of California. Oh no, Shawnee Kenwood did not know they made this piece. That's pretty sharp. Imagine that on your mid-century table. This is not real. Too perfect, they didn't do them for gasoline anyway. Why would they? But this was for an actual store display where you got toasted peanuts out of it, so that one's real. $30 on this little set, that's cute as can be, with all of your spices and one easy to carry caddy that probably got broken. These are Bakelite, and because they're better serving pieces for $5 the pair, that's a pretty good deal. Probably a yes deal, unless the bowl is just too worn. Sometimes when things have been at out of outdoor shows, they look more worn or gritty than they really are. So give them a chance, give them a little polish. Nice McCoy piece here too, the angelfish. It does not have the McCoy mark, but it doesn't matter. It's still theirs. They do have some neat stuff. I really like the orange crush dispenser. Seems to be pretty intact and complete and it's $1,100 because of that. But they really are that rare. Also very hard to find Roseville Vista piece or two. You don't see this pattern often. The flower pocket on the left is that, as is the tall vase. Carnelian 2 is this piece. They did Carnelian 1 in some very muted colors that were not popular, so then they reglazed it and resold it with the 
paper label at the time, before they had the impress marks, as Carnelian too, and it did a lot better. And then my favorite Art Deco line of theirs, Futura, the hanging basket, it's upside down. You'll have to imagine what it would look like upright with the chain, because I'm sure the original chain is gone. But there is what it would have looked like hanging. Isn't that beautiful? I want to put it on like a Devo hat, but the dealer is staring at me, so I think I'll behave since I'm holding their $400 piece. Not a bad price on the candy container with the bobblehead from the 50s from Germany, paper mache, 25 bucks. Autolite battery clock is 750. These are so popular now. Any of those electrical clocks from that 1950s era. This is a reproduction, but a good one of an early Hickman Ebert advertising piece. One more space here. Ooh, they have a dummy bomb, just like the one I tried to take on the plane with me here in Evansville. And gee, they didn't like that. $85 they want for theirs. I think I got about $65 for mine. Range indicator for the Navy. Some plastic beer signs. $350 on the Saturn light, but only $35 on the Miller beer, so they're not being too unreasonable. But, you know, the market is just strong for these. 45 for the Schlitz on tap. Now, if this works, that could be a good deal. But I don't see any sort of a switch. So I think something is missing on this. My first trip back to the car. Well, we have a little walk over to the Toyota Event Center. I've been here this time of year where it was just absolutely pouring rain. So this is a pleasant, nice day. I know a couple of people who are setting up here, including a viewer and friend of ours in our community. Well, look whose card is here, Enamor Amy. I wonder if Amy Hackworth is in the building. We will definitely look for her. Antique shows are a great place to get information about things like local antique malls, other places to shop in an area, other shows that are happening, other sales, estate sales, and getting involved with other collectors plus tourism in the area. I mean, this is a great place to get information if you want to know about things that are happening in your part of the antique world. They only got to start setting up at noon. So the fact that they're this far along, this is a lot different than the show in Evansville where people were really not set up at all. These folks have a row of nice furs, but they have some really neat jewelry too. I didn't want to show it up close because some of it is fine jewelry and you know, that can be an issue for people security-wise. This is cool. He has a lot of toys. He does a lot of the shows in the area. I like this Apollo Lunar spacecraft model that was never done by Ravel, $60. This fallout shelter sign looks like it went through a bomb. And how much is it? We know it's real. $85. Nice railroad lantern. I just got two of these, but they've been converted to electric. Phillips 66. $595. These are no doubt going to be Ool Pottery miniatures. All of this, I suspect, is Ool Pottery made right in the area. Huntingburg, Indiana is the home of Ool. They did a lot of things right after Prohibition for little juice bottles and other sorts of juice bottles. A couple of companies up in New York seem to use their stuff pretty extensively. $40 on the Blanco Swirl. This is a 1980s look. And it's actually a pretty good one, but if it was two colors rather than clear in a color, it would sell a lot faster. So the price is about right. The clock is interesting, set in the celluloid picture frame. I haven't seen the clock in set before. And this is really cool. I like all of the pens. That's a neat store display for $70. I bought a couple of still banks from this fellow last year, I think. Lion is 90, or no, I'm sorry, Lion is 35, I was going to say. That seems like a more reasonable price. The Painted Dog is 95, and that makes sense because the paint is very, very clean on that. 95 on the Zeppelin because that's a desirable design. After the Hindenburg disaster, they quit making anything that looked like Zeppelins. The Turkey is really cool with Thanksgiving coming. Also 95. He's got a bunch of cool cast iron. I believe this is Hubley, the Scotty doorstop. I have not seen the Spaniel before. There's the information on that. This one's a little more recent in time. Okay, this is Dream Boy, and this is Virginia Metal Crafters, 1949. They did a lot of work for Colonial Williamsburg and other places. They were based in Waynesburg, Virginia, not far from the Cumberland Gap. What a nice looking lighter for $4. 
A little Van Briggle piece here. They have some cute things. It's kind of random and I like it. 22 on the Van Briggle is not bad. And then Pluto water from French Lick. This is 1930s Anchor Hawking glass. This is the Manhattan pattern done as an advertising ashtray for $40. Oh, if the person comes back, I'll buy this from them. This is what I wanted when I was a kid, to have a body like this when I grew up. I would think after moving all this stuff all these years, it would have happened. All the birds in Louisville live in Louisville stoneware birdhouses. Actually, these are pretty scarce. $50, that's an interesting piece from them. Oh, it really is. I get the feeling maybe somebody uh, cast that at home or something back in the 60s when you could get those fiber... I don't know. <laughs> Oh, it does have a mold number. Hmm. There's some kind of writing on the bases, but I never could figure it out. Yeah, huh? they're interesting. Would you do 50 for the pair? Well, I just got those really two cool pieces from Fat Boy and the Sioux's Vintage and Weird Stuff, and I'm noticing I'm on the other side of a whole row of Black Panthers. This is a very small watchmaker's cabinet with Audi workbench. Faux finished painted grain. It's got lots of little casting molds and pieces in there for doing your dies and stamping. There's your foot pedal. $95, you know, we're losing a lot of our watchmakers. Gem City College in Quincy, Illinois does still train people and there is still demand because all the people in the third world who are starting to get money are interested in watches as jewelry and they want expensive ones and expensive ones need to be maintained. Look at this Burlwood phone. $35, that is really fun. I wonder if it works. I, uh, oh good, I can't wait to get over there and take a look. We'll see you soon. Very exciting. Generations Antiques are here. They do they have done the show for a long time. They have nice things. They're the ones with the Panthers. There's a lot of good stuff here. I wish I had more time to look. This is a really great collection of various lenses for testing people's eyes from about 1920. Iroquois beer sign. This is a nice one. The metal relief is something that was done by a specific company in Buffalo. So it's pretty hard to find. Priced at 140 Tons of new Zippo lighters. The capital letters in Zippo are earlier than the upper and lower case, but there's still a lot of collectible pieces in both. This is 1950s or 60s. It's now Fort Hood, so this is collectible for the name change. A lot of bases are having name changes now, and that will change collectability of the things that came from them. Unlike Springfield, the people here know and love these purses and charge plenty, so 145 75 150 those are the right prices. 15 each on silhouettes. Very cute bench with the cutout in the side. I always like little pinhole cutouts like that. A primitive bench here. Looks like something in the Flintstones bedrock modern house. So nice to see with the original box. I've always liked the dogwood set. Oh, that's beautiful. And the jadeite Aladdin lamp is really nice. It's that 1920s jade, that really rich color. Ah, oh, beautiful. Looks like it's the original uh, chimney and even the mantle. And they gave Oh, an extra one to come with. An extra mantle. But you don't dare touch those mantles. No, they'll crumble. In another booth, we find the watchmaker's bench. This is a 19 teens era one. It is really nice, yes. This is really a neat piece. It's got all the little drawers, the parts drawer, and then this sifting drawer so that you could not lose things while you were working through them. Zeno used to be a watchmaker and had a bench just like this, and we sold it for a good price. I wonder how much this one is. Three twenty-five seems like a pretty good price for that, too. I've only seen two. Yeah, I've only had one. Well, you have a lot of great stuff, so you're entitled to be distracted. Got a nice thread cabinet under there, too. Well, the show looks really great, and I wish I could shop more because it's always such a good show. I always get good stuff here. She would be fantastic if she wasn't as is. You can see the cracking. You have to be careful with the heads because they are a celluloid base. She's wonderful otherwise. This is a nice Lucite purse. I'm not always crazy about the beading though. It takes away from the more modern aspect that I like. A lot of great dealers with still banks and kitchenware and 
Oh, he's got the Carling O'Keefe Nine Pints of the Law sign. That's a very famous scene from Canada. These folks are just starting to roll in. These folks are starting to roll in. Beth's bees, but we're looking for a different Beth, and she's right over here. This is Beth Kemper and her daughter Emily, and look at this. They are here in the real world doing it. I am very, very impressed. How's it going so far? Mess. Well, it's a couple of hours of, uh, <laughs> yes, toil and trouble, but it looks great so far. I love the big orange vase. Yes. You got a screaming deal on that, too, yes. didn't you? My $20 vase. $20 vase. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Well, I'm hoping you get 10 times that this weekend. Pretty? Yeah, uh, <laughs> such a great color. No, oh, this is really fun. Oh, I like those, too. Yeah, I'm very solo at $300. Have you really? Wow, that's great. And I mean, it's only been open for preview a few hours. That's really good. What'd you sell? I sold a bunch of the jewelry. The lady came. Oh, that's good. That makes me happy. I had Snoopy Christmas decorations. I sold those. Oh, cool. McCoy Pottery. Fantastic. Oh, well, I'm glad you're off to a good start. How much left do you have to bring in and do? I think we're at towards the end of it now. Really? Wow. But, uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. More tubs. Uh, that sounds like the storehouse sale I'm working on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to go back into. Oh, now I feel better. I was going to say they can't be this done. Okay. This looks like the way I do it. Yes. Yes. When in doubt, put it on the floor. Is that Burley Winters? That speckled one? I really like that. The purple and bluish color. Yeah. Yeah. I got that. Just because it had that. Yeah, but that is really pretty, though. Wow. No, I don't. I don't need to have it, but I do really like it. No, I need. I need to be selling, and here I am buying. Oh, that's a little piece of treasure craft. Uh huh. I. This was the very beginning of the line back in like 1979. Ah, how cute. Oh. Oh, you will. It takes time. I mean, I'm impressed that you've got this much out after just a few hours. But you've got a good variety. I think you're going to do well. I like the horse head. Is that Italian? Yeah, that's the one I was telling you about. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, good. And I'm happy to say I don't see a lot of the jewelry I sold her. I just sold her a number of these pieces the other day so that she could bring them to the show since I wasn't coming. Ah, made in Italy. Okay, that to me looks like 1980s or 90s mark, probably. It's really sizable, which is good. I don't think we can attribute it to anybody, so it's going to be a decorative piece, but um, what do you have into it? 80. 80, yeah, I mean, my number was like 225 just for showiness. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling it out of the air because it's really, you know, when you get into more contemporary things, it really is more about... Does is it a statement piece? Are we in horse country? Uh, you know, is Italian pottery popular right now? And then you just sort of have to kind of try to figure it out. It's not always a science. <laughs> Let our eyes adjust a little bit as we get in here. There's an entire set of merry mushroom canisters. Actually, it's not the mushrooms; it's the roosters. Sears did those as well, or actually, I should say, had them done for them in Korea. I, I already spent my money in six boots. <laughs> <laughs> so you're reloading and restocking? I'm reloading and restocking even while I'm supposed to be getting ready to sell, yes. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, you are promoting the show, and the show is getting bigger. And I keep telling people, you know, the, it's, it's really a lot about the energy you put into this. There's, a, there's an audience out there, but you got to go out and get them. That's right. Well, and with the fantastic vendors, it just really is. You do have really good vendors here. I mean, especially in the, the pavilions, but even the people who are selling a lot of this sort of stuff, there's a lot of fun things and it's variety and the prices are good. And, you know, yeah, it's great. So the shiny brights, a lot for the whole box of really cool ones, but I don't blame them. Dippy dumper. I always like the Phillips 66 advertising gas pumps from the old U.S. highway system days. Vitalite. Federal signal. It's plastic. It's probably 80s. Well, these folks said I could film their assortment here because they've got a whole bunch of jars. People want to call them ball jars. That's like calling everything Kleenex. It's actually a brand name. Ball was its own company. They eventually merged with Care. You see those typically more than you see other things. Ball was, I believe, the descendant of the Mason's patent, as they mainly all were, which came out in 1858. But this was done with this patent shown 
I believe through about the early 1900s, maybe 1910 or so. But here are a bunch of other companies you don't see. Silicon Glass Company of Pittsburgh, $35 on that. This one is made for a company, United Drug Company out of Boston, Massachusetts. I'm not sure who the maker is. The lid looks like it's from a ball jar, but that may not be the original. This one's called the Smalley, and it's a self-sealer, meaning that you could put the wax on and pop this on and you didn't have to do anything else to seal it. Self-sealing was pretty revolutionary, obviously. Economy you see fairly frequently, but McDonald New Perfect Seal, a little less banner. These are in the $10 to $12 range, whereas a ball jar like that might be six or eight. Swayze's Improved Mason. This is an older Mason here that still unless they're really unusual colors they don't sell for a ton of money but they've got some interesting ones now here's crystal mason this is a harder piece to find the dre square i always like the square jars these are from about 1930 i don't think that's the original top because when i was a kid see we dug a lot of these out of the backyard there was a bottle dig champion syrup refining in indianapolis 75 dollars local interest plus that is going to be something that was done specifically for a rather small outfit they wouldn't have made a lot of those if you study past just i want to have a cute blue jar on my table with flowers in it for my wedding ball jars and their related cousins are really interesting i need that for my booth from some sort of a drive through if you want to look like you were in the military without having ever been you can just get all sorts of Fraternal Organization medals, music medals. There's Seattle 1963, the VFW convention, Indiana Farm Bureau, a delegate to the VFW encampment. So you really can make yourself look very official. Cute little vanity bench, $75. I remember when you used to buy those for 15 wholesale. This is actually a pretty good ashtray. It's been cooked pretty badly over the years, but it's a classic design, $20. Definitely saw a lot of those in my childhood. They have CS to wear down here. They have some neat stuff that I think is fun from my era. $12 is not bad for these if they're in good shape. These are the Western brands and the mahogany jackets if they're not cracked. That's a pretty cheap price if I were to take these out west. But when am I going out west? They also have the... I will be, but I'll be flying probably the next time, so I don't know if a bunch of glass is the thing to get right now. 15 for these, I mean, great prices actually. Somebody should buy those, it's killing me, man. Florida Roadmap, $3, okay, that I can take. Susquehanna Hand Cut Crystal. Okay, there is some interest in these, and I've paid too much for them before. And now I think I'm about to pay too little because I don't see any use of it. It works. It's a little aged from sitting somewhere, but it's three dollars. I'll take it. Oh yes, here's this interesting experimental plate by Wedgwood that's supposed to show a bunch of different logos and transfers that they do for various purposes around the world or throughout the Commonwealth, perhaps. But it's actually talking all about a third of your life is spent in bed, and it was advertising for Simmons. England had a really bad economy in the 1970s, and companies did what they had to to stay afloat. It's interesting now. Harold Gould, Arkansas, did a video of thrift and antique stores from there where they had a whole lot of Niloak and Camark pottery, and they also had a dog and suds. There's a mug from there, and it appears to be an older one, 50s, 60s era, $8. Since the antique mall closed in Princeton, everyone has moved here. Four Roses Whiskey, an old tavern bottle display. Oh boy, this is cute. Uh, you're going to have to get me a bigger one because I think I want this set too. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, this. And the shot glass. Yeah, would 20 do? Um, yes. Okay, great. I like the travel bar, too. I wonder how that clips in. Hmm. I don't know how. Well, there's a lot of stuff here, but I am not going to be able to look at all of it. There is so much. 
I'm going to go to the exhibit next door just to show you. This is the 4-H exhibit, and there's not so much vintage in this hall. The vintage is mainly in the Toyota hall. It's pretty segregated, other than this fellow who does have some vintage trains. He's been in this hall for a long time, so they've kept him here, and he's got some great stuff. And his prices have come down maybe 25 or 30 percent, which is about in line with market over the years but uh, for what he has he's fair and he's got neat stuff and it's so cool to see these things running when you see a big train set going there really is quite a feat to put together besides i, I think of gomez adams i'm looking at some puritan pottery royal copley this looks like the kind of thing i'm selling this weekend nice midwestern base here forty dollars i'm not sure if this is wool or someone else Oh my goodness, wow. I'm trying to reach higher. I understand. Well, that's uh, quite a discount. Thank you. Well, no more excuses. I have to go now. This was fun playing hooky from getting my estate sale finished, but I will go do that now. And we're going to all pitch in together and get it done. So I will have some more coverage from there on the Antique Nomad Shorts channel. In the meantime, I got to get going. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.